Advisors. I'm Don Lego, and it's time again to buckle up for a new episode of Raise Nation, the one and only podcast made to inspire fundraisers like you to continue making impact in our communities, building better tomorrows, and exchanging ideas. So whether you're a trailblazer or seasoned pro, you're going to pick up those trends that transform your fundraising. And together, we'll dive into lively conversations and chat with industry-leading fundraisers and thought leaders to explore hot-button issues and innovative ideas. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes while we inspire you to embrace the future of fundraising. All right, let's get going. I am so pleased to share this special Raise Impact series. We're continuing with Raise Impact because it's been just such a wonderful inspiration and tool for all of you fearless fundraisers out there. Um, In this series, we chat with expert authorities about achieving fundraising success. Um, We talk to thought leaders. They share their 411s on a wide range of fundraising topics. So if you're a fundraiser, sit back, relax, or hop into the car, get your grocery done or your power walk or get the kids off to practice and uh, listen in because we have some special and expert advice that may come in handy to help you further your mission. Today's episode, I couldn't wait to, to welcome our guests. Um, I typically let our guests do their own intro, but I, I'm going to have to set this one up because I love, love, love um, our, our two guests. They are extremely special people. Um, I have to come up with some words, let's say class, classy, inspiring, uh, humble, um, trendy, um, fashion forward. Um, oh, I have a long laundry list. But uh, today we are speaking with Eliza and Scott Friedman with Jewels with a Purpose. So, so, so happy to have them here. They are my favorite people in the whole wide world. We're going to talk some really fun stuff. Eliza Scott, welcome to Raise Nation Radio. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much, Dawn. And I know you just got I know you just got back from a trip, so hopefully you're uh, rejuvenated and refreshed and we can talk about some fundraising. How does that sound? Amazing. We're ready. (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, let's go. Um, you know, I you have such a beautiful story behind everything you do. I feel like you're just one big world of inspiration. So I'd like to start there. What is your story? Can you tell our audience just how you got into this space? What motivates you? What drives the inspiration? We're going to get to what you do in just a moment, but I just I want to hear your story and, and let our listeners know you a little bit better. Um, I uh, started Jules with a Purpose in 2005 as a way to give back to the community. I knew that no matter what I would do as a job or as a business, it would have a giving back aspect. And Dawn, I feel so grateful and fortunate to fall into this uh, niche and work with amazing organizations nationwide and now globally because it just opened UK. Yay! <laughs> I know this it is to you, you but not. it's just a you, big deal. <laughs> oh, you opened the UK. That's exciting. Yes. Yes. Oh, good to know. Honestly, well, one. So why? Let me ask you, why, how and why did you know no that idea. everything- No idea we've come so far. You, yeah. But how and why did you know that everything you would do would have a giving back component to it? That's like because amazing it's just, to me. It's just uh, my nature. I grew up in a um, small village in Romania. Um and my family just did, did just that. Uh, my dad was a uh, priest. My mom was a school teacher. And all I could see is that they helped everyone. And that's all I know. And that's all I wanted to do. I'm fortunate to be here in the United States and have the best opportunity. I lived here half my life. And uh, I just wanted to pay it forward. Um, life has been so amazing to me and uh, I just know that the more you give the more you can give and through this channel working with nonprofits is just the best universe for me and designing fashion is my (laughs) yeah everyday passion Um, I wanted to channel my talent my creativity and uh, I started designing jewelry and then handbags and, wow. you know, I could have gone that route retail because I've been approached by big retail stores. They love my products. But I said, no, I will just start small 
give a little bit every day for the rest of my life. And surprisingly, after 18 years, we've come so far. I am amazed every day of all of the huge nonprofits or small that reach out to us asking us, can we please have some of your items? Because it's so difficult these days to, to um, curate items. Of sure is. I know. Yeah. We talk to fundraisers all the time and, you know, volunteers and committees and subcommittees and planning. There's so many moving parts to events and um fundraisers and auctions and you you really do make it make it easy and i'm going to get to that in just a minute but i just want to hear a little bit more about your story so now how did you meet scott and how did that (laughs) magic all happen there because the two of you were dynamic duos (laughs) scott was it love at first sight it had to be look at eliza she's stunning in every way yeah (laughs) and and uh you know eliza exactly what she said this has always been a labor of love it's the giving back portion of what we do really makes it so gratifying because at our core, we're a jewelry design firm, but our our focus has always been to enable a nonprofit to raise funds and never go the retail route. And we've really maintained that now for our 18th year. And like Elisa said, it's just remarkable to see the growth the organizations that we benefited, the millions of dollars raised, and just people reaching out to us uh, on a daily basis, asking for help with their events. There's nothing more gratifying, Dawn, and we love what we do. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of moving pieces in this business. Uh, We refresh our line twice a year. There's manufacturing to deal with. There's distribution. There's getting quality product into the hands of silent auctions and, and event organizers. And that's why we're so grateful to be aligned with one cause it's just such a beautiful partnership and uh we we love helping and that's our nature so uh, beautiful happy to help yeah beautiful all right well let's get into it because you know we're, we're talking about you know jewelry designing and and um how you guys met and where you got your roots from and and all but they're probably like well what do they do exactly so i know but why don't i let you i mean you really do help nonprofits achieve top bids at their auctions and fundraisers through the curation of these wonderful items. And, and I don't think people think about what you just said, Scott, right? When, when a committee is sitting down to plan their auction and event, I don't think that they really know fully what goes into that back end of what you do that makes your product so special that almost can't be duplicated by just sending somebody out and trying to get a pair of earrings or a jewelry collection. And I think that's what makes it so special. What I love about you and and Jewels with a Purpose is the attention to detail. Just like you don't close a flap on a piece of jewelry without making sure that there's some messaging or inspiration, the colors, the look, the feel, the case. Oh, go ahead. Tell everybody. Let, let's talk about Jewels with a Purpose and what you offer, the services you offer to nonprofit organizations. I'm going to let Scott um, answer that because I'm the designer and I'm the... Uh... <laughs> hey, I've seen you in the boardroom. I've seen you in the boardroom. You're pretty fierce, but that's She's okay. We'd love to Thank hear you. from Scott. Go ahead, Scott. Thank you both. So it's really, you know, we have to tick a lot of boxes and we really reversed engineered. We always put ourselves in the mind of the nonprofit organization and then kind of worked it backwards and created a model where we can help them achieve a goal and at the same time still be still survive all of the, the trials and tribulations of a couple of decades of doing this. And uh, I guess it starts with quality product. We go to great lengths. Elise is an incredible designer. We have everything fabricated to very high standards, and yet we maintain a very specific price point to make it affordable for a wide range of patrons at an event, whether it's going to be a more casual event or a golf outing, all the way up to a beautiful gala, you know, black tie with a thousand people in the room. So the product line has has absolutely just uh, emerged over the years and been fine-tuned where there's a, a really wide breadth of product to cater to all audiences. And at the same time, the packaging is built so it can be displayed at an event anywhere in the United States or now internationally, because like Elisa mentioned, we just opened up in the United Kingdom. And that's very exciting as well. 
So we try to make it simple where uh, if there is a physical in-person event, it goes from our shipping container, shipping box to the auction table with very minimal effort. It literally takes minutes to be completely set up. And we try to make it as simple as possible. We try to save that nonprofit resources in having to go out and seek donations. We try to give them a quality breadth of product line that they could feel good about, that adds excitement to their event. And more importantly, that their patrons walk away with something that is lasting, that brings back a memory every time they put it on their neck or ears or wrist. And it uh, it reflects back positively on the nonprofit. And what we find is by putting all of these pieces together, uh, nonprofits have great success and they reach out to us year after year to assist with their events. In the last couple of years, when we saw the, the pandemic take hold, we were able to shift completely to virtual and our products, much to our surprise, sold beautifully in an online format. It uh, it really worked quite well. And now that events are back in pretty much full steam ahead, it's, uh, it's amazing to see the energy uh, that we're hearing on our phone calls and emails every day, seeking our products. And more importantly, the results when the event concludes to hear that we raised this amount of money. We can't believe it. So that, that's so how in the virtual model, do you do the fulfillment too, direct to the donor or do you ship yes. to the organization and let them do that? Yes. No. Along the lines of trying to make it very simple and streamlined for the nonprofit, we either for a virtual model, we provide fulfillment after the fact. Oh, wow. All of the shipping is complimentary. They just let directly us know. The, to the it is directly to the auction winners. They let us know the names, addresses, and emails. We provide detailed tracking. We ship within 24 hours, and they never have to touch the jewelry or handbag. It literally goes. Well, see, that's from- what I mean. There's a lot that goes in behind the scenes. Uh-huh. You know, I I have the pleasure of speaking to you on a regular basis, and I I, I you know there's a lot going on here. There really is. It's a lot of love and a lot of work that you put into what you do. But what's the risk? What's the risk? I mean, you know, we're hearing this beautiful jewelry. uh, It's, you know, has a European design to it. Um, Eliza, you're just amazing with with what you do. I mean, by far, I I have the pleasure of owning a pair of earrings from Jewels with a Purpose. And Alyssa, if you're out there listening, mommy wants her earrings back. They're (laughs) hands down the best earrings that I've ever had in my entire life. It happens a lot. We fight over them. And, you know, she's at Boston College now. She took them with her. I'm not so happy about that. But um, so we're going to get to the whole design inspiration and all of that. But but let's talk in simple terms terms for the nonprofit? What's their risk? How many items do they have to take? Are they on the hook? Is it easy? Scott, uh, just let's, let's talk about some of those things. I think that's what's in the back of the mind for some fundraisers. Elisa, would uh, when, you like or would you like me to Yes, continue? yes, yes. When the fund, when um, the nonprofits reach out to us or the board members or committee, they always, um, they, it, it's a new concept. Uh, they always ask, what's the risk factor? And the sure. simple answer is zero risk for them. We bear all of the risk because we ship all of these items on consignment and we do not charge anything till after they sell and only for the items that get sold in their auction. So it's zero is for the organization. We bear all the risk because we have hundreds and hundreds of packages full of items all over the United States, all over the world soon. That's a lot and, of tracking um, for you guys and a lot of risk wow. that you're bearing. A lot of but trust. We're happy to do so because so far so good. We're into the 18th year and it's been amazing that we work with amazing organizations and it all um, worked out. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of trust and a lot of work. And, you know, just as a fundraiser myself, thank you, you know, for what you do. It, you know, sure. you, you, you don't have just an inventory of items and, you know, you're covering your costs and your profits to live. And you really have love in this. And it's exceptional. Zero risk. That's crazy. So if I'm a fundraiser, I could call you up right now and say, I want 12, 18, 20 pieces. And they show up at my door. And if I don't make a penny, I send it back to you and all is forgiven. Is that really what I'm hearing? Yes, it is. 
<laughs> completely. We do our best to do our due diligence to make sure that all of these nonprofits are legitimate and we will get paid after the fact. Of course, we're business. Well, you have to. I mean, or then you wouldn't be in business and we wouldn't have these wonderful collections to have. So, But that is not really my worry. My worry is that I I need to have enough um, inventory to never have to say no to anyone. (gasps) I live by that. Um, I do my best. I have to circulate all of the cash flow. Um, (laughs) It's growing at the speed of light. Uh, Of course it is. Uh, We've been growing organically and it's been helping us to get ready for the big surge that we're seeing right now. So all is good. All I worry is that I have enough for everyone. (laughs) And if (laughs) I I could just add to that, Dawn. Yeah, please, Scott. We bend over backwards just to make sure that every organization um, maximizes what they hope to achieve. We always try to strike the right balance of jewelry, jewelry pole, which is a very exciting part of the business as well. We could talk about that and handbags. And we're very reactive. As a matter of fact, we got a call yesterday from a lovely young lady who's having an event this Saturday. We overnighted the package to her. She has it in her hands today. Oh, you're kidding. We hate saying no. We always try to bend over backwards to make sure that we do everything we can to help them raise whatever it is they seek to raise. And uh, it's been working very well. But it is uh, it is a challenge to track because we have packages throughout throughout the country and at um, any given time at any given time. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to talk about the design. They're just so special. You have such a. um Uh, just such an inspiration. I mean, they're really special. I've never seen or felt or worn jewelry quite like it. So can you tell me a little bit about what's, what's behind it all? Cause they're one more beautiful than the other. I know you do have, you do draw from some European inspiration, but how do you get there? How, How does that all happen? Well, the whole idea is that I I do love the high-end designers. No question about it. Everybody does. But can everybody afford it? Probably no. I can't. I I, I, I have to think of the 95% of the population that still wants to look pretty, that still wants that piece. They still want to be confident, right, when they wear it. But to make it achievable, So I tried my best to keep the price down by manufacturing and purchasing at an insane amount of pieces at a time. And uh, as you know, our price point is between $50 to $200 Mm -hmm. per per piece or per set to make it streamlined, to make it affordable for everybody that comes to these fundraising events because they do spend money on a ticket, but they also want to give back. And some will make donations, but some, probably half of the uh, attendees would love to take something back with them. They want to give, but they want to walk away with something that they love and talk about the cause. Right. And the quality too, though uh, it's not just taking something back. This is these are really special high pieces. End. Yeah, they're Very special. Yeah, I and you design it. them all yourself. You do. You do. You you you. Yes, you're, you're yes. in the in the trenches designing it all yourself. Yes, it's my inspiration from high end brands. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm one of those people that would rather give the money to the uh, poor and the hungry rather than uh, spending money on it. Um, piece uh, that it's just me okay mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, um, I fall into that category so I love the pretty things and I try to um, utilize them in my uh, designs so that well, people talk about the packaging too I mean you don't just stop there with this, these beautiful earrings. And I, I know you have that, that one collection with that gorgeous powder blue gemstone. And I'm so familiar with you, with all of your, um, with all of your products, but that the packaging, that mango orange and magenta and the messaging that goes on it. I mean, they really are like open up your package and put them right on the silent auction table. You have messaging and generosity inspiration. They're, they're just beautifully displayed. Where? How did that all come together? 
Well, any product looks uh, does justice when it's in the right packaging. And I wanted it to take a step um, forward and um, make use of that package to carry a message, to encourage people. Um, what you're referring to the blue is the blue butterfly, which uh, carries the message of courage, freedom, and hope. Oh, wait, stop and... there. The blue but <laughs> courage, f- courage, freedom, and hope? Freedom and hope, yes. Uh, love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's a story of the butterfly, um, and it gives people, and especially women, the courage to um, um, break through and um, to, to have that hope that we all need when we're stuck in the dark nights. Um, so I wanted to uh, utilize the packaging and encourage people. Uh, we... Um, started off with um, the message of generosity, compassion, um, and now we um, are adding to our line with uh, more um, The other thing we were able to do, Dawn, is to strike a balance to have each piece in the collection be quality, 925 sterling silver, gold overlay, other white mm-hmm. or yellow, and um, the quality and the price point really is what helps make it all work. Because if we were just, you know, a middleman or a broker and we bought it and sold it, that wouldn't work. And that that doesn't really do justice to the model. Mm-hmm. The com- comfort that any nonprofit has is that when a patron purchases a piece from Jewels with a Purpose, it's exclusive to nonprofits. It's exclusive to fundraising. It's not available. Yeah, I can't find them in stores, right? It's not on that's Amazon right. or yeah. stores. It, there's nothing mm-hmm. like it because it's unique. And that's what... But um, that, that also really strikes a chord with a lot of event organizers is that the uniqueness of the brand and the quality and the fact that we design it and have it fabricated, we could afford to sell it without any middleman involved right to the nonprofit after the fact and, and let them share in that lion's share of, of the proceeds, which is really what makes it all work is to how, how to best reach their goals using our vehicle. Mm-hmm. So what I love is the whole storytelling, right? So it's not, it goes beyond just curating auction items. It's, you have this beautiful quality, well-designed piece um, in this stunning packaging that is telling a story that can tie into the mission mission message of the organization. So for example, if if I was a breast cancer awareness um, mission and and I'm having my annual event, not only do I have this piece, but I, I can tap into, you know, have courage, have freedom, be empowered by this beautiful raffle item or auction item, you know, and and that is their messaging, right? To recover, come out of the dark ages, Mm -hmm. blossom, grow. The jewelry is telling a story that ties into the mission, which is telling a story and it it just all works. It just becomes magic, I think. You're you're spot on. We call it alignment. We always want to be very aligned with, with exactly the message of the nonprofit whether they be in the health sector or children or animals or education or really with disabilities, any aspect, we always wanted to be uh, to strike a chord with them and their patrons and to be in alignment with that. Yes. So you have bracelets, you have earrings, you have necklaces, rings. No, not rings. Yes. A few cocktail rings. Yes. Oh, cocktail rings. And then you have collections of all that going together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But then, the piece de la resistance. You brought in handbags. Yes, yes. <laughs> With a butterfly on them. <laughs> yes, yes. It's not just okay. a butterfly. It's a uh, piece of jewelry that sits on the front of the clutch and the handbag. It's made with Sarsky crystal. It sparkles incredibly. I was just at an event in um, Las Vegas uh, two days ago international organization and I see this couple of uh, ladies beating on everything and talking they guess into oh this this is amazing I've been buying I've been uh, winning her items for the last few years that she's been supporting this organization and I love all of them you need to understand these are high quality items they are I and know they just are draws the crowd and yeah. I I see this over and over and over and it gives me goosebumps because it's so gratifying to see that what I love 
it gets that type of reaction. Quite you're honestly, so special. I mean, you're such a businesswoman, but at the end of the day, you just want to see I'm just your customer. Passion. <laughs> yeah, you just want, yeah, you just want good for everybody. And if you're I, so wonderful. If I wanted to boil it down to one word, I think is um, the energy that we put into it. Yeah, it's, it's I see it. Energy. I feel that this product, yes, is jewelry. Yes, is beautiful packaging. Yes, is eye candy. I want it. It's priced very well. Um, I can gift it. I can have a lot for myself. But at the end of the day, I think it's the energy that we put into it and it just comes out. Yeah. Oh, that's a great word. I, I wasn't expecting you to go there, but I, I do. I can see it. That That's a great word. And it's great product for um, live auctions, for silent, for yes. raffles. But then I have seen your product hung on trees, like yes. all these pink and orange <laughs> and magenta and sparkle and Swarovski crystals. <laughs> and what is that whole jewelry pull thing that looks, it's like a photo op. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. I see on your website, picture after picture after picture. Can yes. you tell us about these pulls and mystery boxes? And let's give some of our fundraisers some really good ideas out there. They're magnificent, truly, on these cherry blossom trees. Oh, the die for. Where did that come into play? And let's tell all our fundraisers about this secret trick here. Creativity for me has no limits, Dawn. I always want to better myself. I want to improve. When I work with a nonprofit, I want to make sure their event goes to the next level. I know there's some amazing auctions and the committee and the volunteers do an amazing job. But when I come in, it's not just jewelry that will raise a ton of money for the charity. It's the look. When the guests arrive and they see that beautiful generosity tree full of grab bags that have a piece of jewelry inside of it, they go, wow, Breath what's taken. that? Yeah, and they yeah. want to take pictures. They want to share everywhere. It's like they don't even need a banner <laughs> anymore. Yeah. You know, the uh, step and repeat. <laughs> It's right, right, right. It becomes the banner. Uh -huh. I know there. It's breathtaking for sure. So, what's the idea? You you set you. Do, is it like a mystery or like take me? Let's take let's take, take the fundraisers through the process of how you orchestrate this for fundraising. Okay, so um, uh, we offer the jewelry pool. The jewelry pool, the cost of the nonprofit is fifty dollars, which includes a piece of jewelry worth two to four hundred. So it's incredible. The nonprofit can sell it for a hundred. They can sell it for seventy nine. It's a lot of uh, money raised. You sell fifty, a hundred, two, three. We've seen. People sell 300 of them. Imagine how much you can raise with just that. Yeah, I got to get my calculator out. That's math. Plus that's silent little, auction yeah. items. Yeah, and right. It, it, it's a little, uh, you know, tight on the budget for us to be able to provide it. But we love it because I know we improve all of the auctions across the country. So they receive those jewelry pool grab bags ready to go. They have the choice to have a beautiful tree donated by a local nursery, or maybe a sponsor wants to buy a cherry blossom from the internet. Uh, there's so many ways to display, especially if you work with an event planner, or you may wanna just um, display it beautifully on a round table with a tear in the middle and just add those 50, 100 grab bags. It looks phenomenal. It Everybody does, will no wonder. doubt. It's, 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 it's a grab. They no want, they purchase two, five at a time. It's incredible. So we love doing that because it elevates the auction. And then you can auction off the cherry blossom tree too. Absolutely. At the There's end of no the day. limit to what we can no limit, do. For sure. But it elevates the level of elegance to every event. Along it with does. our auction items, which are beautiful. Um, there's a lot of uh, items, donated baskets. And <laughs> we get this a lot. So we're so tired of our baskets. We need something that yeah. will spice up our auction and say, okay, I'm glad you called us because we can help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The other thing, I, if I can add, Dawn, regarding yeah. the, the jewelry pool is it allows the um, the nonprofit to offer something to their patrons for $79 or $100 where it's inclusive to everybody. 
<laughs> and sometimes yeah. people mm-hmm. don't come to an event with the hopes of spending over a hundred or two or three hundred dollars on right. items. But uh, it's so well positioned, and we provide wonderful signage where, with every hundred dollar donation, um, you, you provide the signage too. Oh we my goodness! It, it's yeah. all about Appreciate streamlining it. and simplicity. So. Yeah. Yeah. With every wow. hundred dollar donation, they walk away with a quality piece of jewelry and uh, it, it flies. People yeah. love it. It's the right price point. And what's inside the bag and the display is just beautiful. It's exciting. Yeah. So now let's go to the silent auction. What do you recommend for a good number of pieces? Is it a dozen, 18, 25? Like how many do you think? I mean, I, I guess it's all relative to the number of guests that you have and the size of your event, but what do you, what are, what are some ranges that people could sink their teeth into as far as, okay, I need a collection of fill in the blank. How many pieces? We, um, we listen to them and then I draw my conclusion of what they need and I will wow. provide, I will select for them. So for a good size event, 200, it's mainstream, right? I would um, say six to eight items for the silent auction and probably 20 jewelry pull bags. Wow. If the event is bigger than 300 people, I will go with more. Um, I want to have enough of a variety not too little and not too much. I know just mm-hmm. exact, um, exactly the amount that they need based on what they tell me, based on the attendance, based on the ticket price that helps, based on the um, guests that uh, arrive at that event. Sometimes I would, most times I offer silent auction items. Um, probably 50% I will add the jewelry pool as well. And yeah, they're, some, they're magnificent. Yes. And there are some events that are a little uh, more um, at the high level, and I would add one or two pieces for the live option. Sometimes they use it as an opportunity drawing, like this past weekend. We donated a piece. Um, it cost them $400. It was earrings and um, necklace. Amazing. $2,000 value. And they sold keys. To open the locket, they sold 60 oh, keys super for cute. $25. So I didn't realize that it raised them over a thousand bucks, just that. Yeah. And it it's an fun. And it's an acrylic yeah. box with a spotlight on it. It was gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh, wow. How, how easy it is to pre-sell opportunity drawing tickets. You receive the key at the event and you take your ch- uh, chance. And it was amazing to see that person win it. It's also engaging. It's it's almost Very. built in entertainment factor, right? The participation it's engaging. was incredible. Yeah. Oh, I would like my little key. That's seeing so cool. people seeing people line up at the jewelry pool and opportunity drawing and silent auction. They're over each other. When the auction is about to close, my tables are filled with people blocking the other people to put in the last bit. I haven't seen anything like that. It's so amazing. Well, that's why you need mobile bidding, though, so that people are not, yes. yeah, get rid of those paper bid yes. sheets because we don't want any yes. blockers of bids, right? Exactly. I have to give a little plug there. That's true, um, yes, yes. All fun. right, so now what about the, um, you know, because I can see this, like how perfect is it for Valentine's Day? How perfect is it for, you know, Mother's Day tribute to do something like this or for, you know, so many like wonderful times of year where we want to pay tribute to the, you know, the women in the world? Um how does it work with with virtual? Do you, like are you able to supply the photos and like let's say you're doing an online auction and mobile bidding? Do you help there too if somebody is still not quite yet back to in person or perhaps decided that virtual might be better for them? Absolutely, it's it's really um, we, we really perfected it several years ago when uh, the pandemic started, uh-huh. and uh, it's just blossomed ever since. We have stunning photos, professional quality photos of every item. Usually, there's two photos if there's an opportunity to do a close up and then displayed on a model, and oh. uh, vivid, vivid descriptions. Um, suggested starting bids, fair market value, and everything is emailed um, in advance. It's so easy to upload onto your platform. It's We really try to make it very simple. So they don't and even have course, to take pictures. You, you, they, they just sit back exactly. and get every wait for an email from you. 
they never have to even touch to. the jewelry. <laughs> and then, of course, after we do the fulfillment and they just um, what a service. really profit from it. So it's great. And uh, for physical events, it's also equally easy. We provide free shipping directly to them. And on the odd chance that an item or several items don't get sold, they just get mailed back to us. It's so simple. And, and what about multiples? organization. What about multiples? Sometimes you want to do multiples like on the fly. If something's really popular, mm -hmm. um, if I was at a, a, an event and, and a silent auction, let's say I was an organizer event and a silent auction is really going hot, 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 especially with mobile bidding, you can add another package and you'd be able to fulfill that then in that case, right? So that shouldn't be a problem either. Yes, 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 we are. We have plenty of inventory for the items that are popular and we make sure that they have backup in case it sells multiple times. I've seen this a numerous times. One item starting at 150, 150 and ending up at $1,500. <gasps> Imagine for the organization to sell three of them at the yeah. bid. Right, because you got to watch your... Got to yes. watch that bidding and get some intelligence out of it. And then yes. call Jules with a purpose. And everybody's happy. And you've been, you've been articles and interviewed by everyone and anyone, right? I see your picture all over the place. Um, it's just, you've had, you have a fan base and how, how fun is that for you? <laughs> it's fun. It's I just don't intent. focus on that. It's just, it <laughs> She's always so humble, Scott. <laughs> so humble. It, it, but it's the truth, Dawn. As I before, know, I we're, know. We're just humble people. We, we're, we're not in this for the limelight. We're not trying to build a brand. We're really just trying to do good. But you and did build to, a brand, uh, <laughs> but despite of yes. that, despite, despite of all that. I mean, a public brand, you know. You won't yes, oh, I know. Or, but we are a, definitely a, a well-known name within the industry. And it's been an honor to kind of evolve as, as the leading producer and supplier of jewelry for nonprofits and handbags yep. now. So it's really a labor of love. Yeah, those handbags are super cool. They're, they're just perfect. And I love your passion um, when you model them, you know, for us. Whenever you get new products, we're first, one of the first, I think, to see them. And I love watching you, you know, model them and just how, you know, like a kid in a candy store that you are and how giddy you are about your own products. It's, it's really special to see. I can't believe we've spoken, you know, that that way. I could talk to you for another couple of hours. How do we find you? I mean, where, where, where do we go? I think nonprofits are probably getting the picture now and their minds are turning and they want to talk to you. How do we get to Jewels with a Purpose? Thanks. We would love to start a conversation with anybody. Please reach out to us. It would be a pleasure. Jewelswithapurpose.com is our website. Jewelswithapurpose.com. And that's it. And you'll find us on the contact page there. You'll see pages of wonderful photos from all of our events, many virtual, many in person, some hybrid, lots of great examples. And of course, the jewelry and handbag line is there as well. So yeah, we look forward to helping as many mm -hmm. as we can. Yeah, there's the product page and um, you just reach out to us. We will send you the ring, uh, the direct link to pricing and uh, uh, it will only take minutes by the time minutes. we set you all up. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty good for a busy fundraiser. Um, any last words of inspiration from you guys? You're always, it's always so fun to talk to you, but any last words that you have for us and for, or fundraisers out there? For me, it's, it's really about building relationships. And um, that's really what we seek to do because it's so gratifying to see that we're working in our fifth or seventh or 10th year of working with nonprofits, uh, the same nonprofits and new ones. So um, we try to be aligned and we try to always put their best interest in mind. And uh, I think that's really helped. It's been a win-win situation for everybody. Any secrets? Any What's after pocketbooks? What's coming up next? I promise I won't tell. Anything tell. coming up soon? <laughs> oh. There's always new things in the works. You'll, I know. You'll be very surprised. This is a big breakout year for us in a lot of ways. So yeah, we'll, we'll see I'm some sure. fun things coming. Anything from you, Eliza? I just wanted to talk to the nonprofit community and um, thank them for trusting us. And um, I, we we're so grateful to see this big surge and um, just reach out. We will help as much as possible. Um, you inspire us and um, what you do is hard work. What we do is just a piece of cake. If we can oh. add to your event as far as... Um, uh, elegance, um, fundraising, we're happy to. We'll do our best to never have to say no. 
Yeah. And I know that that's true. I've had the pleasure to know you for a good year now. And uh, I can say 100% that that's super true. Well, fearless fundraisers, that's all about we uh, all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's Raise Nation topic and your daily dose of fundraising inspiration. If Jules with a Purpose is not inspiring, I'm not so sure what is. Tune in for a new episode release every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Thursdays, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the channel that you like best. Um, and But in the meantime, be sure to listen in to all the episodes on Raise Nation. Um, make sure that you follow us so that you're getting those notifications about new guests or check us out on onecause.com on demand. Fundraisers are doing amazing things to build better tomorrows for our communities. The stories are awe inspiring and you won't want to miss a single episode. I would like to thank our sponsor, One Cause, for making this episode possible. One Cause is driving the future of fundraising with easy to use software solutions that help nonprofits connect with their donors. Be sure to check them out on onecause.com and visit the resource tab on their homepage for a broad catalog of eBooks that you'll find helpful. You'll even find a blog from our guest today, Jewels with a Purpose. Um, t- uh, the blog is just type in wow factor and you'll be able to find it. A huge shout out to Liza and Scott from Jewels with a Purpose. I really appreciate you sharing your story and your authentic voice. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having us on. What an honor. Thank you, everybody. Well, thanks again so much. That is a wrap. Until next time, I'm Dawn Lego, and this is Raise Nation Radio. Stay fearless out there. (laughs) 